Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. It's Jennifer. Now if you have watching my videos, you know that I'm completely addicted to die cutting. So today I'm going to take an old stamping technique but use it for die cutting and call this spotlight die cutting. Here are the three cards that I created with this technique and I'll show you bits and pieces of these three cards but I made them all at once. Now looking here closely you can see that the area of the tag die cut is kind of spotlighted so it has the embossing just where the tag is but it lines up with the stamping behind it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using this tag die from Waffle Flower. This set comes with a few pieces that are really unique. I'm just going to use this plain tag but there's also this larger tag with a separate die to cut the hole in it so you could put the hole wherever you want in the tag which I think is kind of fun and then there's also this reinforcement die piece that you could cut and then fold over the top of either of these tags. I like that there's a lot of options that go with this and they have some add-on die sets that go with this but again I'm just going to use this simple tag. I've arranged the die kind of towards the bottom at an angle of a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock. I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine will work for this. Now I'm going to poke from the little hole in the back of the die to get this little circle out from the top. I want to keep that. So I'm going to keep that piece, the negative space, and the tag die cut itself. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for three pieces of cardstock so that I can make all three cards at the same time. Now here I have just a giant piece of scrap white cardstock. It's just, I shouldn't say it's giant, it's just slightly bigger than the card front that we have created here. This is temporary, so you could use scrap paper for this if you want to. This is just temporary so we can do our spotlight um, stamping on this die cut. So I just put some adhesive on that cardstock on the back and I'm going to glue the die in the center, or the die cut in the center, and glue that little circle in the center. Again, this is just temporary. If you wanted to, you could glue this to the front of your note card and skip this step, but I really wasn't sure where I was going yet, and you'll see later on when I pull this all together. I'm using this stamp set from Waffle Flower called Loved. I like that these pieces kind of fit together and build up to create an image. I already practiced this a little bit and decided where my stamping was going to go on a piece of scrap paper over here, so I'm going to set that aside outside of the screen and use that as a guide to follow. Also to save time, I've taken all the images I want to use out of the stamp set and put them on acrylic blocks so they're ready to grab. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing the stamping. I have three different color um, cut combos that I'm going to do for the three different cards. I'm just going to go ahead and start with the first one that has the grays. This is the Simon Says Stamp Smoke Ink. Now I am starting with the main image, which is the greeting, the loved image, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this with that smoke ink on all three of the card fronts. Now I wanted to stamp you are with it, so I'm cutting that word apart so I could stack them on top of each other. I can always mount these as they're originally intended. I'm going to go ahead and stamp R above loved on all three of the card fronts, and then U above that. I find that when doing this kind of stamping where we're building up a bunch of images close together, it's best to start with the main thing, the sentiment in the center, and then work your way out and fill out around it. So now that I have the main image, I'm going to move on to my biggest image, the biggest flower, and I'm going to stamp that up close to that greeting so that the focus kind of stays on that greeting. So on the first card front, I did that in a, that same gray smoke color. Now for this other one, I'm using some of the new W plus 9 pure color inks, and I'll list below every color that I used here in my YouTube description and over my blog if you wanted to get these exact color of inks. So for the first card, I did the gray for the flower. The second card, I did that reddish color. And for the third card, I'm doing this darker pool color. Now I'm using a combination of Simon Says Stamp Inks, W Plus 9 Inks, and Hero Arts Shadow Inks. Any ink would work for this. You could use any ink. I just like these because they slowly, slowly absorb into the paper and get nice and smooth. So you'll see I'm jumping around between the three card fronts, but this saves time. While I have the stamp out, I might as well go ahead and stamp all of the card fronts with that same image. You can make one card at a time if you wanted to. Now that I have my three large flowers done around my sentiment, I'm going to go ahead and do the leaves. Now I wanted to save time. I'm not taking the time to mask off the flower. Instead, if you watch, I'm only inking the outside half of the leaf so I can stamp it up against the flower and only have that outside peeking out. Now this isn't the perfect um, way to stamp this. I might get a little overlap, but I thought it was good enough and it saves a lot of time not doing the masking. 
Okay, now I've got my three big flowers with the leaves. Let's move to the next size flower. So I'm working from the biggest images out to the smallest. And this little flower here, I'm just going to stamp around the other images. Now I did um, three different cards, as you saw. This one, which has a mix of colors. I did one that's all grays and one that are just, um, just two shades of gray, gray, I should say. And then one that is just two shades of pool, just to get a variety. But you can do any color combination you want. This would, one would be a good one to mass produce all in the same color spectrum. But I thought it would be fun to do a variety here. These only took me maybe 45 minutes to do all three cards, which I don't think is too bad. Okay, so now I have these little stems that I'm stamping outside of the images. I love these little stems that we can go back and stamp blossoms on and berries on later on. That's the great thing about these stamp sets that kind of build into each other. So now that I have all of our main images, I'm going back and doing those building images, the tiny little images that fit the ones I've already stamped. So there I did the center of the flowers. Now watch this, this little berry cluster goes perfectly with this little, little sprig that we stamped earlier. Look how easy that is to get perfect placement. I love these building kind of stamp sets. Now also you can check out this next one, this is great. This is the does these little blossoms that go off the little branches that we did earlier. Look how nicely that lines up. So you can see, even though it looks so elaborate, these stamped images like these from Waffle Flowers are great because they build onto each other, and it really just takes no time at all. Okay, so here you can see the different color combinations for the three cards. So we have the colors in the background and on the tag. Now what we need to do is spotlight the tag. So change the images that are on the tag so that they are heat embossed instead. Now you could just leave it as it was before and just kind of pop that tag up and that's a little bit of spotlighting. But I wanted to completely change how the images on the tag looked, but they would still line up with the colorful images in the background. So what I'm doing is taking off the tag from the background that we temporarily put together. So I have my three tags here. Now I'm going to stamp over every single image on these tags with Versamark ink. And then I'll put some embossing powder on it. Now I'm not going to do them all at once. I want to do a few of the images with the Versamark, then add the embossing powder and heat it because I don't want the Versamark ink to dry as we work. So I'm using the Liquid Platinum Embossing Powder from Ranger. I love, love, love this powder. So I'm doing the, the bigger images first and then I'll go and do the smaller images. Now there are a few ways you could do this. I'm doing all three tags at once, just a few images at a time and heat setting them as I go. There are a few different ways you could have done this. If you didn't want to stamp over each of these images, you could get the Versamark ink pen and trace over each of the images with it. That's a sticky ink pen. And then add the embossing powder and heat set it. If you wanted to skip the embossing altogether to save some time, you could just trace over all of these stamped images with a black pen, and that would give you the spotlight look on the die cut. But I really like the look of this metallic, um, the, you know, the metallic look of the embossing powder on the spotlighted tag. Okay, now I did go in with a white pen and give a nice definite in definition to the edge of my embossing powder because it was all kind of blending together after all the stamping. And there we have the tag completely embossed. So let's go ahead and put our cards together. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the card, take the card front off of that temporary card stock that we used before and glue it to the front of a note card. I could have glued it to the front of the note card from the beginning, but I wasn't sure where I was going with the card. So I'm taking all three of the card fronts and gluing them all onto a note card with a top fold. Now it's time to add that spotlight tag into the center of the card. So what I did is I die cut six of the tags from some white cardstock and I'm gluing them all together. This gives some dimension to our tag so it's nice and thick and stands up. If you wanted to save time you could just use foam tape and pop, um, kind of pop dot that tag in place but I love the look of layered die cuts to give it just some great dimension. Then I glue this stamp die cut onto the top. After doing this with all three of our spotlight tags, I used some old silver floss from my cross stitch days and tied this around the top of each of the tags. I like this silver DMC floss because it frays on its own, which I think is kind of fun, which you'll see in a moment. Now I'm going to take our spotlight tags and glue them right in place with the stamping. And look how that spotlight embossed stamping lines up perfectly with the colorful stamping behind. So this is a fun twist on the old spotlight stamping technique but at this time I'm doing it on some die cutting. 
Here you can see that fun little frame that you get with this string. I just think it's fun. So here is the other card where I have the colorful stamping in the background and then the spotlight tag. I just have the, the heat embossing. And then the third card, it was all grays with that silver embossing. So I added a little color with some enamel dots, some peach colored enamel dots. So there you have a fun twist on the old spotlight stamping technique by using some die cutting. I used three cards and I kind of jumped around with all three cards in the video, but I think you can get the idea of doing the colorful stamping in the background and spotlighting on the tag with the heat embossing. If you're interested in any of the products I used, they're always linked below in my YouTube description to many sources. Or you can head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com where I'll have a whole lot more information. And all, as always, I appreciate you stopping by and I hope to see you back soon.